A big welcome to our channel, we are team crushing the meta and you can call me D-Boy. I'm here for you guys with the deck profile and this would be on Nubutama Shiranui. Uh, before I do the deck profiles on the new technical booster I thought why not just take a look back at the decks from the last technical booster, so the first one. Um, so going first with Nubutama then I will go to Tashkazi and after that I will show you a deck profile of Rising Nova. Um, because I will be playing Rising Nova at Worlds, I thought why not do that at just the last one because then I will have um, also an update on how the deck did in a big tournament like that. So, started with uh, Nubutama Shirinui, it's a very strong deck and it's very fun to play. It's something different and as most of you guys already know, uh, Nubutama have their specialty of taking cards from your opponent's hand and taking their guardians, just their interceptors, just uh, make strong attacks and hit them and then put more pressure on them uh, most of the time. So let's just get through the deck profile. I will not be um, reading the names of all of the cards because I don't think that I will be able to pronounce them right. Uh, so that's why I will just be explaining most of the skills and showing you the deck profile. If you don't want to see the whole deck profile then you could just uh, comment in the comment section below and we would send you um, a deck list of the deck if you want to. So, playing 4 copies of Shirinui as your main grade 3, he has a very good stride skill which is uh, you can't plus 1 when you stride on the top of him. Um, you can choose one of your opponent's rear guards and bind it uh, face up and then your opponent would have to discard a card from their hand. Uh, at the end of the turn they would take the bound card back to their hand um, which is good because then your after image would be active. Uh, if you don't know what after image is, it's uh, when your opponent take a bound card from the band zone back to their hand. Um, then if you have six or less cards in your hand, then you could take the after image card back to your hand. So um, it's really good. It's bad against decks like um, Diablo, but against decks like. Uh, Narukami or Kagiro or Kagiro if you want to pronounce it like that um, against decks like that that kills the rear guards you could just take the rear guards back into your hand so you could use uh, their skills again if you want to so uh, and then his GB2 skill is when you attack and you have less cards in your hand than your opponent he get an extra 5k and a crit so with the 5k booster behind him he would still able to um, attack for 21 with a crit. Uh, I don't really like his GB2 skill, I think it could have been better. Uh, like when he attacks your opponent would have to discard something, uh, which would have been better in my opinion. But yeah, it is what it is. Uh, so yeah, the second grade 3 that you play in this deck, um, you could play the break ride if you want to, it's a pretty good uh, card, but I like cards with after image abilities. Uh, so you could use most of their skills. This is a pretty good backup grade 3 and also a very interesting rear guard. Um, he has a GB1 skill and when he is placed on the rear guard circle, you could target one of your uh, unit and give it an extra 3k. Uh, the 3k doesn't matter because giving a booster which is already 7k an extra 3k, which will make uh, this column attack for 21k, which is a great number. Um, also, if you write him as your fin guard, he has the same skill as most of the backup grade threes. Like you count plus one, you solve plus one, and you search the top five for an after image ability. Um, it's really good. I do love him uh, as a second backup grade three. I did try to play the break ride at least um, two copies of it just to get um, just to play him on the break ride, and then you could also stride. Uh, make your opponent lose a lot of cards from their hand on that turn, but um, I now would rather to go into Shirinui first and stay at him because uh, every turn that you strike for one counter blast, your opponent would definitely lose a card from their hand. So, uh, yeah. So for the grade two lineup, you only play seven grade threes. Uh, as most or some of you guys know me, I do like to play uh, 8 or 9 grade 3s in most of my decks, but in this deck you play only 7. Uh, the reason for that is that you play 2 copies of the starter. Um, this is a pretty um, much ad 
decklist that is uh, played most of the time. Uh, why is this decklist played like this? Like this? Because uh, this clan has uh, pretty little resources, so you could change some cards around, but I would rather play the deck as it is the strongest. Um, as I said, I did try to play the break right in here, but it didn't work uh, the way that I wanted to. So, uh, two of the starters, uh, it's a pretty good card and it does help out with the counter charge. Uh, this deck, or Nubutama in particular, had uh, a problem with uh, counter charging, so this guy does um, help out. Um, or to go, this girl does, <laughs> could help out. Um, using her, her skill, when this card is placed on the regular circle, you could uh, your opponent would have to choose one of their bound cards and put it in the drop zone. Also, you could just um, so if a card was put into the drop zone, you could just counter charge one, which is really good. Giving an extra counter charge to use uh, on that turn is pretty amazing. Uh, also, it does have the after image, uh, yeah. So you could just take it back into your hands at the end of the turn. So very amazing. Uh, two copies because yeah, you know you could use him uh, more than once, and they go back into your hand. Also, they are think K uh, shield, so there is no reason why to play only one. Uh, well, there is if you want to play eight gray threes, but I would rather play it on this. Um, then your target for the early game. This is a very good card. Um, as I said, I will not be able to pronounce the names right. Um, when this card is placed on the rear guard or the fin guard, you can target one of your opponents, um, the rear guard, and bind it face up. And then at the end of the turn, they get that uh, rear guard back to their hand. The good thing about him is, is he will be able to give you the after image ability uh, before uh, you go into GB. Um, also, the good thing about him is that uh, you could just take out an interceptor and anything uh, and put more pressure on your opponent. Your opponent would have to uh, think hard um, about losing uh, the rear guards. So, four copies of him. You could play three uh, and play four copy of this guy. Um, but I would rather get the after image ability as soon as possible. So that's why I play four copy of him. Then, as I said, um, three copies of him. He's the Glimmer Breath clone. Uh, so, Counter Blast 1, Soul Blast 1. If you have Shiro Nui Vanguard, uh, you can give one of your Rhaegar the after image ability. And also, you give it an extra 3k. Um, the good thing about this card is, is that he will be able to go back into your hand. And the other card that you gave the after image will also go back into your hand. So, and the extra 3k does matter as I said, so I do like this card a lot, but playing um, 4 copy of him is too much, because you don't really have a lot of uh, ways to fill up your soul, except uh, your uh, critical trigger which goes into your soul and you draw a card, um, but also 2 is just too little, so that's why I play uh, 3 copies of him. Then you also play four copies of uh, the when it boosted count plus one GB one uh, attacks the fan guard uh, skills. <laughs> uh, this card skill is um, when when you when this card is boosted attacks the fan guard count plus one GB one. Um, this card gets an extra three K until the end of the battle. So that again that does work with all the extra three Ks. And then, if the number of cards in your hand is less than your opponent, choose a card at randomly from your opponent's hand and bind it face down. So, this is one of the cards that bind a card randomly from your opponent's hand, especially on the turn that they only have three cards in their hand. Uh, this would be very good uh, because just be able to take their perfect guard or the heal trigger that they want to guard with and then bind it is really good. Uh, making your finger attack. Uh, hit or just more threaten um, So yeah, I do like this card a lot also boosted by um, boost, Boosted by him He could also attack for a pretty good number because uh, This is 13 and then he get an, she get an extra 3k would still be a 16 uh, 16 is just the right number to uh, attack the finger 
if they want to guard that attack they would lose at least one card from their hand and then using her skill uh, before that to just get rid of one of their cards then they they would be pretty <laughs> uh, desperate to try to guard most of your attacks but I don't think um, if they are at 4 or 5 damage then you could just kill them off uh, for the Great Y lineup, I drew play four copies of the G Perfect Guard. Uh, the SP on this card is just too good. Uh, the art in this clan is just amazing. Um, you need the G Perfect Guard because you do counter blast a lot, and you need at least three or four counter blasts open for your final turn. Uh, so that's why you need the G Perfect Guard. Um, you play four copies of the Stride Father because uh, this deck does stride a lot and you do need uh, him to stride with um, also because you only play 7 grey 3's then you especially need 4 copies of him in this deck um, 3 copies of Dreadmaster because this is one of the cards that puts a lot of pressure in your opponent especially early game uh, so what he does and when you attack and he is boosting that attack and the attack does hit you can't plus 1 and then if the number of cards in your opponent's hand is more than yours then they would have to discard a card um, so it's another card that just put pressure on your opponent and let them discard uh, then you play two copies of uh, Fuki I think his name is, <laughs> his name is. Um, you can't plus one put this card into your soul and then if you have an Obdown Vanguard so your cards in your hand is less than your opponent which is the same as uh, no this card uh, this this guy is different uh, if your finger attacks and the number of cards in your opponent's hand is three or less then you may pay the cost and then if you do choose a card from your opponent's hand at random and bind it face down so uh, this is one of the cards that could also get a random card from their opponent's hand uh, but your opponent would have to have uh, three or less cards so it does only work with your final turn uh, and you do lose him because he goes into your soul but still it's a very good card it's a pretty good ability uh, playing only two copies of him because you don't really want to use that skill more than once um, and then you have the after image uh, guy the great one he's really good I do like him when this card is placed on the regular circle if you have a thing guard with Shiranui's card name then uh, you could Soul Blast 1 and uh, look at the top 3 cards of your deck if you have something with After Image in their ability then you could call them uh, to the Rhaegar Circle again you do lose a card from your soul so that's the same way uh, you don't play 4 copies of the Glimmer Breath clone yes great for the triggers uh, you play 4 of the crits, the Shirinui crits uh, this deck is very crit heavy so you play uh, just the 12 crits the reason why you do so is you want to finish your opponent off um, on the turn that you call a final turn um, this very strange thing about this card is it doesn't really have uh, the, the emblem of the dragon um, of the dragon empire in there uh, something very funny you should uh, search out if you didn't uh, see this before um, so yeah playing the 12 crits is, impo is important in this deck you could take two of the crits out to play two draw triggers if you want to I do not recommend playing the stand trigger in this deck uh, because there you can't really uh, rush your opponent when you want to sometimes you de do need to have to wait uh, to rush them at the right time so the stand trigger doesn't really help out uh, making strong attacks with your fingers is important because they would have to guard every attack and then giving the criticals to your rear guards would be pretty amazing because with them having the criticals and attacking with them um, your opponent would have to guard every attack that you make um, and then of course you play for heal triggers um, doesn't really matter which one you play I do like the art on the old one but I play the new one in this deck uh, because yeah <laughs> and then for the strides uh, let's start with the GR uh, first uh, this card combines with 
combined with the grade 3 it does make a very strong play so let's say uh, you have Shirinui as your fin guard and then you stride into him uh, using Shirinui's skill not first but second so let's say you have Shirinui as your fin guard you stride into him first you can use his skill by counter blasting 2 and then um, you unflip a copy from your G zone uh, face up no, it doesn't really have to be one of himself just anything else um, and then if your opponent have to choose four cards from their hand and they keep those four and all other cards they have to bind face down so let's say they have 10 cards in their hand it doesn't really matter because they can only keep four uh, and then uh, sharing Shirin skill will have them to discard one card from their hand so they only have three uh, and then if you use her skill they would have two if you use the great one skill they would have one and it's just, it's just like that this this deck does kill them off in one turn uh, if you get the combo right so very strong guard very devastating to go into that turn but I would only play this once um, because this card is counter blast two he's a counter blast one and uh, she's a counter blast one and the great one is also hot plus one so uh, playing all of these in one turn it means that you have to count plus four uh, and that's just very very heavy cost it if you do anything like you if you use your starter uh, you use the perfect guard you can you cannot just get back to four counter blast in one turn so um, being able to use this skill, I would say you can use it once in the duel or in the match. Uh, but yeah, it, it depends on the way that you play the deck. If you think that you could pull off his skill twice, then I would say why not play two. You could play two, then play two. And next, we have two cards on hit skill, two different hit abilities. Um, when he hits, uh, you, your opponent would have to discard something from their hand so striding on Shirinui they already discarded something and then you attack with him they have to discard something else it's really good um, with his skill it's different if you have three or more after image cards on the field then you could use his skill which is when he hits um, your opponent would have to bind something at random from their hand uh, but at the end of that turn they could get that card back uh, to their hand so with him they just discard it and with him they bind it but the card they, they bind uh, could be at random so using his skill first and then using the starter skill to get rid of the bind card is also very good uh, then I play two copies of this card uh, this is the stride from the fighter collection uh, I do like this card because it does do pretty good against uh, units with the resist uh, what he does is your opponent would have to target two of the rare guards and all other rare guards will be binded face up so uh, because if a unit has a resist uh, they could not target that card with your ability so they would have to bind that card face up because it is not been targeted or chosen by his skill it's just binded because it's not targeted it's something pretty crazy but it does work like that um, if I am wrong you should just put a comment in the comment section below because I did ask this um, I did ask a judge if this was right and he said yeah it was uh, but if you think that you are sure that that is not how the deck or how the card works then you should just tell me then I will uh, try to uh, send Bushiro an email and ask them if if I was right or if the judge was wrong uh, so yeah, it's a very good card and also uh, if there are three or more cards binded by his skill uh, then your opponent would have to target two of their binded card and they, they will have to put them into the drop zone. So it's a very good card, um, it's a bit different, it's situational, your opponent would have to have at least five rare guards on the field to get his skill off, uh, but skill sometimes you just want to uh, put more pressure on your opponent and just get rid of some of the rare guards so he's pretty good with that also this is another card that you could use first and then go and use Shirinui's skill 
So you could take four of the rare guards out if you want to. Uh, then for the triple rare uh, stride, uh, this is one of the cards that I am not very sure about. I, I also have to read his skill up for you guys. Uh, so you unflip a copy of himself, he's a GP2 and you count plus one. And then when this unit attacks a finger, you may pay the cost. If you do, your opponent choose a card from his or her hand and discard it, uh, or bind it face down. Then if your card in your opponent's hand is three or less, uh, this unit gets an extra critical until the end of the battle. And then your opponent would have to put the cards bounded, uh, binded by the skills back to their hand. So, um, when you attack with him, your opponent only have or has three cards in their hand. That, that, that is just crazy, uh, because most of the time your opponent would have like seven cards in their hand. Uh, with your new skill, they have to discard something. They would be at six or five, and then let's say you attack with uh, her first. They would be they would be at least at a four and then if you use his skill then they would be at three and then you could get this skill which is the extra critical um, it's a good card it does put pressure on your opponent uh, especially because he does get an extra critical it's the only card in this deck uh, that get the extra critical except the Shirinui so I mean the only stride uh, but I don't really like this card a lot. I, I sometimes just do not really use him. Uh, also, the count blast is heavy. I'd rather go um, into him because he, he's just free. Um, but yeah, remember your opponent would still have to discard something from their hand, so it's still good. Uh, then for the G Guardians, I play two of the, the Guardians from the Fire Collection. Um, and then I play one Dismal and one Screw. Um, you could also play two Screw if you want to, uh, to replace the Sprees because I do play one Sprees in the deck. Uh, the reason why you do play Sprees is because um, most of your after image abilities and the pretty good abilities are GB1, but the downside about Sprees is he is a Counter Blast 2, uh, which is very, very, very heavy cost for decks like these because they need all the counter blasts that they could get uh, but on the other hand if you use the priest skill you could get the starter back and then using your starter ability you could get the counter blasts or the counter charges uh, that you need so uh, on the long run sprees could be heavy the two counter blasts but if you really think that your opponent could not ride that turn or if they are really if they really did G assist and they didn't get anything, then you could just go into sprees and just attack and get three cards and then use your GV1 skills. Also on that turn that you use sprees, um, you do need to have at least three counter blasts open to use his skill and Shirinui skill, uh, otherwise you're just wasting uh, your stride turn. So this was the deck profile, tell me guys what you think about the deck. And also what you think about this as an idea from us to uh, just look back at the decks from the first uh, technical booster. Also, um, which deck do you think that would be the strongest from the second technical booster? Do you think that Murakumu will be just as good as Great Nature already is? Or do you think that Great Nature would be stronger? Uh, also, what do you think about uh, May Colony? Because May Colony, as a machining deck with Destroyer, they were very strong. And now having the GR and the Dark Face tried, you could still play machining as very good. But also, which deck is stronger? Is machining really stronger than Dark Face? Or does Mr. Dark Face have something to say about that? So tell me what you want to see next. Uh, I mean, which one do you want to see first from those? Because I could do a deck profile on machining because I have the deck very complete. Uh, Dark Face, on the other hand, is just not complete yet. Uh, and Great Nature would also need some work. But uh, yeah, tell me what you want to see next. Murakumu is pretty much complete, so we could do a deck profile on that also if you want to. Um, yeah, guys, thanks for watching, and till next time. I'm also sorry about. 
this deck profile taking this long but I thought I would just try to explain most of the cards because not all of us are experienced with Nubutama. So yeah, thanks for watching, until next time.